Hey everybody, Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals, and welcome back to the channel. So today I have a 360 camera, the Insta360 ONE X. And as I've been experimenting with this camera and other 360 cameras, I'm quickly starting to realize just how many potential applications 360 degree video has. So in this video, I thought it would be a good idea to go over some things that you should look for in a 360 camera if you're considering picking one up. So the market for 360 cameras over the past couple of years has grown pretty rapidly. And currently there are like a dozen 360 cameras on the market to choose from. But today, we're mostly only going to talk about three. The Insta360 ONE X, the GoPro Max 360, and the Insta360 ONE R, which personally I haven't got to experiment with yet, but nonetheless, it will be covered. First off, my general impression with 360 cameras is that I can see a lot of different people getting one. Most are only a couple hundred bucks, which is a very approachable price. And that's relatively quite cheap for what they can do, if you ask me. Honestly, I could see this technology being applied by anyone in completely professional scenarios scenarios or completely recreational ones. That's kind of why I wanted to make this video, because we're at a point now where there are a lot of great options for 360 cameras, and if I can, I want to help you choose which one is the best for you. So let's get into it. So to start, I guess you've got to ask yourself, what is it you're looking for in a 360 camera? So I should mention that I'm mainly talking about videos here, but if your one goal for a 360 camera is 360 photography, then this guy will probably do the trick, but there are a lot of other cameras to consider too. We're just not going to talk about those in this video. But if you are using a 360 camera for video, you've got to ask yourself, what are you using it for? Are you using it to give virtual tours? Are you trying to capture action sports in a whole new way? Or maybe you want to live stream to social media in 360 video. Or you just want to see what that tiny planet thing is all about. Any of these reasons are perfectly fine, but chances are that for you, one of these cameras is going to stand out more than the others when it comes to meeting your criteria. Okay, so on the physical level, all of the 360 cameras we're talking about today are rather small but the build of the camera is something to consider. The Insta360 ONE X has a slim vertical build that's friendly towards hand holding, but if you're rigging it up, it really only has this one quarter 20 on the bottom, and honestly, I wouldn't trust it to be rigged up in a very active scenario. But many look at the slim profile of the ONE X as a plus for mobility, and its thin profile actually helps its image stitching, which I have to say is really impressive. The GoPro Max 360 has a more cube-like build with a rear touchscreen LCD, and that GoPro mount we all know and love sits flush at the bottom and flips out, making it compatible with all of those GoPro accessories you may already own. So I was stuck hand-holding both of these cameras when I was testing them, which worked better for the Insta360 than the GoPro, but that's not a slam on the GoPro, that's just me being unprepared. So whichever 360 camera you go for, you're going to want to invest in a selfie stick or some sort of handle, or else you're going to get a lot of hand in the shot. Okay, last note about camera build. The Insta360 ONE R, their main competitor to the GoPro, GoPro Max 360 was announced as a modular system. They leaned much closer to making it like the GoPro with an LCD screen, significant waterproofing, and all of the cage accessories for it feature the GoPro mount on the bottom, even making it compatible with GoPro accessories. One thing that both of our 360 camera competitors are doing the same is this keyframe based editing workflow, which is the chosen workflow for the GoPro Max 360 and the Insta360 cameras. It takes a little getting used to, but it's actually a really cool workflow and you'll probably be doing that for any 360 camera you get. You basically just jump to a place in your timeline, set the angle, make a keyframe, and when you move on to do the same thing down the line, the software is going to program a movement from one keyframe to the other. And when you start to string a few together, you get something like this. Now both brands have their own free editing software that allows you to do this, or they both have plugins that allow you to do this in Premiere. But I hear GoPro's Premiere plugin is a lot better than Insta360's. Whichever 360 camera you end up choosing, get ready to become familiar with its mobile app. Because depending on how you're going to be using the camera, mobile viewing and mobile camera control are going to be very useful tools. For example, if the camera is high up and out of reach, which it often may be, you're going to love being able to record and change the settings right from your phone. Both both of these apps allow you to scroll around the image to check your framing, but in the GoPro app, the live monitoring stops when you start recording. Basically, all 360 cameras work by generating their own signal, whether it's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, so that the mobile app you're using can retrieve that information from the camera. And if you've ever used anything like this, you'll know that your experience will vary greatly depending on the strength of that connection. In my brief experience with the Insta360 ONE X, I didn't have many connection issues, but on the GoPro Max 360, I found myself having to exit the app and reconnecting pretty often. So let's 
let's talk about video quality. All of the cameras we're talking about today are capable of capturing 360 degree video in 5.5K or greater at 30 frames per second. They also have 3K resolution options for higher frame rates, but this is where I have to insert my opinion. Normally with cameras, I'm a strong believer that higher resolutions aren't necessarily better, but for 360 cameras, I do have to say that you should always be shooting in the highest resolution possible because 360 imaging really benefits from having that extra bit of information. When dropping down to the 3K option, I noticed that the quality drops significantly, and I'm not just talking about one camera in particular. I found this to be true with the Insta360 One X and the GoPro Max 360. The only reason I would consider doing this is if I was going to slow down my clips, but honestly, I think 360 cameras are best suited to capture real-time events anyways, so if I'm not gonna be slowing down that footage, I'm always going to take the greater resolution. Many people seem to favor the GoPro's 360 video image over the Insta360, and I would have to agree, but honestly, it's a pretty close comparison. The stabilization is great, the highlights recover nicely, and the colors are nice and rich, but I have to say that all of those are present in the Insta360 One X, but just to a slightly lesser degree. Okay, so in conclusion, if you're someone that's otherwise not that into video, and you just want a cool gadget that's capable of capturing 360 video, then the Insta360 One X is probably going to be the choice for you. It's small enough that you could take anywhere, and if you don't have your own editing program, that's okay, because it's pretty much best edited in its own free program anyways. Also, if you have live streaming or social media in mind, that's going to be a great reason to consider this camera because currently the Insta360 ONE X supports that feature and the GoPro Max 360 does not. The downside of this camera is the battery life isn't great, so all of that live streaming is most certainly going to have to be done on external power. And the build of this camera kind of leaves these lenses exposed, and if one of these lenses gets damaged, that pretty much leaves the camera useless. So if it sounds like you're going to be pushing the limits with your 360 camera a little bit more than that, then maybe you are in the market for the GoPro Max 360. With much better battery life, a durable rugged build, and all of those GoPro features you may already know and love, if you're already a video creator, the GoPro Max 360 could fit into your pre-existing workflow pretty easily. The general consensus is that the quality of the 360 video from the GoPro is pretty favorable, and the Premiere plugin for the GoPro Max 360 works much better than Insta360's. Mobile connectivity is nice, but there's something to be said about being able to control all of the camera's functions from the rear LCD screen. However, the app performance from the GoPro 360 was a little disappointing, and honestly, the image stitching is not as advanced as it is on the Insta360 ONE X. But if you want the best of both worlds, you could go with Insta360's more modular competitor to the GoPro Max 360, the Insta360 ONE R. Internally, the Insta360 ONE R is not that much different than the original Insta360 ONE X. They just ditched the slim profile and built it for modularity. So for an extra $80 from this guy, you get waterproofing, an LCD screen, and a new H.265 codec rather than the H.264 that this camera used. But you lose battery life and that 360 live streaming. If the thought of a modular action cam that adapts to your usage excites you, then the Insta360 ONE R could be the 360 camera for you. But honestly, for just $20 more, you could get the GoPro Max 360, which is the camera that it's basically designed after anyways. All right, everybody, so that pretty much wraps it up for this week's video. If you liked this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you have any questions about the 360 cameras that we talked about in this video, drop a comment in the comment section and we can have a discussion about the decision making that you guys think should go into getting a 360 camera. So with that being said, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more weekly content and we'll see you in the next one.